So we will call the meeting to order. Mr. Flacco, can you take roll? Lori Kaminsky? Here. Tom Hank? Here. Scott Fishel? Here. Linda Briassi? Here. Jennifer Hardy? Here. Can we stand for the pledge of okay. And that brings us to the reason why the meeting was scheduled to talk about the OSBA call to action, the legislative platform. So this is some discussion for the board. All right. <coughs> so, um, I guess just following on from from uh, from last Thursday, and then and also some information that that you were able to garner yesterday, uh, Mrs. Krasinski. Um, I, you know, we talk a lot about different things um, as far as the constituents groups, constituency groups, which need to have kind of a understand what's going on on the seat at the table, and and I agree with all of the assessments that that we need to have. <clears throat> You've been represented, right? It, it was pointed out uh, Thursday that we necessarily haven't gotten input from the administration on this. We haven't necessarily gotten input from the teachers, but we certainly have not gotten input from the community and from the, the parents on this. And so I, I think it is our obligation to, to make sure that the parents and the community have input into this as well. And, and so I, I, as I look at this, I, I think this is sound, but but if we need to have further discussion on on this, um, it's it is you know other other points were made that you know is it partisan or not? I, I, I do find it hard to believe, hard to see how, how transparency is is um, is partisan per se. Um, and then the other the other thing that has often been said is that that you know gosh if, if people want to see what's going on they just they just stop in and see it. Well I. That, that, that's great for 1994 and earlier, but, but we have the internet. We have ways of putting things online, and I, I just I don't think that's an adequate answer for where we are today with the technology we have today. So with all those things, I really, I'm hoping that if there are, if there are language issues in here, I, I know that you know, all this and all that, all, all is used a lot. We can we can use we can strike those. We can we can modify those. We can take out particular planks that are items in the document that 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 are, are there you know are sticking points. But I, I do believe the foundation of this is sound. And, and how I don't see how transparency can be a bad issue. So I'm just going to add. I don't believe it's a bad issue either. I agree with that. I just don't feel like we have adequate time. To do all that work prior to having to have this to OSBA by May 31st, we haven't. In order for this to go through for this current year, we would have to have this to them by that date. That's the it's their drop-in date. <coughs> I'm not exactly sure how we do that. Um, my second thought is that if we're going to do items like this and we have things that we would like to address with OSBA and have them, you know, advocate for certain issues that we take some time to look at those things and we ask our own attorney to put together our own thoughts um, rather than get information from third parties, other people we don't know. Like, I, I again, I, I question where the information came from. I asked, you know, four times in the past week. That was not provided. Mrs. So, Kroniski, just let me finish. Mrs. Absolutely. Mrs. Kroniski had to provide that um, and she didn't even bring this to the table. So. You know, you did a lot of work on that, and I appreciate that. I haven't had enough time to review all of the material that she provided for us to, you know, review yesterday, which was late in the afternoon. Um, and so I'm, I'm just asking that if we're going to do something like this, that we actually give it a more thoughtful approach. I don't feel like having a meeting for an hour is going to give us enough time to do that. No, I, and, and I appreciate all, all, all the comments, but I, I think there. There was some additional background that, that uh, Mrs. Krasinski brought to the table, but as far as who wrote it and, and the, the, you know, quote unquote, who paid for it, which was pro bono, and that those, those questions were answered. And then I honestly feel that, that, that this issue stands on its own, right? I, it's, you know, I, I, I guess my question wasn't necessarily who, who wrote it and who paid for it. That was part of it. It was where did it come from? Where did it grow from? Like so, who who brought that to you? Because 
So, so here's, here, here's the problem we have. Is Are, are you the arbiter of, of what we do outside of the school board? I mean, no, I'm am, just I, am, asking I, am I your arbiter? The but here's, here's the problem, is that, that really you ask that question, but really that puts a chilling effect on our ability to, to reach out to people. Should we, should we have to report if somebody from the community reaches out to us and report to the board who that was? I mean that that is that is a, that, that is that is an effort to to chill the ability of of the board members to do what they see as fit. And while that may be, Tom, I believe that in the issue of transparency, if you're asked, then you should provide it. I, I, I am transparent in in I am transparent in what I stand for, which I, I had put in, in a, as we were trying to coordinate this this meeting, I put in <coughs> what I stand for. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to paraphrase it as best I can. And that is that, that we <coughs> need to have good governance. We need to have transparency. We need to bring people into the table to, to have discussions. But ultimately, what I stand for is, is bringing people, our students, our community, members of our community who are young educate, and to be educated so that they are capable of, of thinking have critical thought, are educated, and frankly, walk away from their experience here at Riverside, understanding America as it was founded, on the principles it was founded, and respecting those principles, right? So I don't know what else I can I can say, but that's that's how I should be evaluated, is whether or not the things I bring to the table should be consistent with those with those things. And, and where I get inspiration from or or who I who I would work with is really frankly none of your business. So Real quick, I, I just want to have a great conversation. We've had a lot of discussions about the expectations that we have of each other right at the board table. And I think that's where this is falling. So, but I want to make sure that we get to address, because as you said, there's a very small window, right, that we have to get any of this done. So I guess, can we focus, and again, we can have additional conversations about what are our expectations. I don't, it would be great, I think. We talked about getting more involved, you know, being advocates in different places. So it would be great. I don't know, <coughs> do they need the call of action at the same time of the year, you know? Does anybody know? They do, it's the same. And, yeah, and, uh, it's the same window. Yeah, and so in the future, what would be great is we as a board, not just, you know what I mean, but we sit down and we start talking about what do we want to advocate? So I'm, I'm just saying in the future, I think that's an expectation we can set if everyone agrees. But I think at hand today is this particular platform that we need to decide if we're gonna back or not back. And, have that discussion. So are we okay trying to move forward with that discussion on this particular platform? I mean, I I still am of the same opinion that I was on Thursday, that I do think this is something that should be, I think, tabled until next year, that we take the year to actually talk to all of the stakeholders in this, which is our union, our administration, everyone that's affected by the changes in this, and do it right and do it in a way that we work with our legal counsel to make sure that it's exactly what we want to be, not something that was written by someone else, that we just modify a couple words. Yeah. Because I do think that this is still too broad. Where I, obviously, I'm a parent too, I fully want parents to have the right to know everything. This is not, I think, something that we would have created at Riverside, and I don't think that something where we all need to be at work soon gives us enough time to do it the way that we want to see it done. So here, here's, a, here's another thought. Um, is that, that, you know, basically from the time this was presented to the members of the board via, via email to the point that it was due is, is 60 days. It will have been 60 days when that, that uh, you know, by the time this all transpires. Spire. So, you know, I, I, I certainly, I think I, I was presented, you know, at the end of, at the end of um, it's in the end of March, thank you. Right. So, 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 it's not like I this was presented and said, boom, here, here's, here's something that 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 we need to to to, to look at. We've had we've had time to do that, and I, and while all your comments, I understand what you're saying. It's, it's we, we did have that window of opportunity, and we, and, it, and frankly, it just it wasn't utilized. I, if I, you know, frankly, I'm I'm certainly all about getting the stakeholders involved, but, uh, you know, that didn't come up until 30 days after in, into the cycle. <coughs> well, so, in hindsight, we should have immediately called a work session if we were going to have something like that. And it's at this point, though, unfortunately, on May 4th, here we are. I, I right? hear you. But here, here's another. We, we could put this into the policy committee, 
and, and, and sit right. down. Right, which I'm on, which also wasn't even addressed to the policy committee at all. Well, but see, here, here, and this is why, is because this is not, this is not policy from Riverside. This is this is this is trying to to set a plank for for OSBA, which I thought was outside of of the, the normal the normal uh, situation. But perhaps that was a misjudgment on my part. So. Well, I think if you're going to do something like this, typically would, I I would have thought that's the way we would have put it through at least, just because we do typically take any kind of changes we want to make or things we want to that we want to get the board to support go through committee, regardless of committee, right? Any committee. Um, that's just the way we began doing things a few years ago with really using the committee structure that way. Yep, and I and, and frankly, had this been brought up, that's exactly what I would have done. So um, I, I, but, but I do think we're in kind of a quandary because I, I think this is a. This is something that that is that is valid. That we we still have some time to potentially work through this and, and get something that we can get a uh, get a vote on later this month. It's uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty simple vote: a yes or a no. And if the no's carry it, it could always be re reintroduced at another time. My bewilderment is we're here. The business is to teach kids. And I think everybody knows, or almost everyone would agree, that when the parents know what's going on with their kids, there's a better outcome. And the lack of a desire for transparency confuses me, makes me wonder what's going on. We had a rather large contingency at the Thursday meeting. Um, even though some of these things in, in this resolution here are already in our policies, Shoot, half, the, half of this is already in our policy. So, so we're pushing back on what's already our policy, and that's, that's bewildering. That being said, on Thursday there was a rather large contingency that said they would resist this, even though half of it's already in our policy. They said they would will, willfully disobey this, even though half of this is already in our policy. And we have board members saying that, gee, 60 days isn't long enough to really look at something where half of it's already in our policy. So that's confusing to me. Um, further on the transparency issue, why wouldn't everyone want the parents to know everything that's being taught to their kids? I know that uh, Superintendent Kalis, I asked you last week if you would be willing to email the parents in, in, the, in the idea of transparency and the parental rights to know that the social emotional learning program of responsive classroom is now in the Riverside schools and being taught to their kids and you just adamantly said no you wouldn't do that. It was approved by the Board of Education two years ago. We've been uh, using that program for two okay, years. So I asked, it, hasn't, it hasn't been an issue since January. Excuse me, I'm not finished. But to thank, understand. Thank, that. thank you, I'm not finished. And so you adamantly said no, you would not do that. What you did say is each individual parent, if they so desired, could come into the school and you would make it available for them to look at. A simple email. My goodness, what is an email to be sent out to the parents so that they can know what's being taught to their kids? So th this whole idea of a lack of transparency and the pushback from the board members, from administration, uh, from the teachers, is really baffling to me. It looks like we're working against the education of our kids, not for it. So I, I move that we vote on this and, and we pass it for transparency. So I, I guess I have a couple, I don't think that anybody's saying that we don't want to be transparent. I think that's putting a really large umbrella over something. I think that what we're saying is that there's some words in here, my personal opinion, there's some words in here that where it encompasses all, everything. Like every little change can, I, I, I'm sorry, we can't, th there's a lot of communication. There's a lot of communication anyways and as a parent, I'll be honest with you, I'm bombarded daily with communication from the district. It's really hard to shuffle through it sometimes. And it's out there though. And I hear people say, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about that. And I get it. We're all busy. We have a lot of emails. We have a lot of social media. But there is a lot of communication on it that people don't see. So there's a lot of questions for me when we say all. Like what does all mean? What does everything mean? What does, how do we also protect the fact that there are parents that come in and instead of being helpful, they might um, cause um, I don't a disruption. You know what I'm saying. So I I guess what makes me nervous, and I again agree with parental rights to be involved. Call in, get whatever information you want, ask us questions. I just want to be careful what we're saying as a board collectively that we'll put through. That's it. 
You're correct. Our policy I spent last night after talking to Mark Lane, Mr. Mark Lane at his law firm, there's a, a lot of policy. I just pulled up a few of them and read in between lacrosse and dinner and everything. Um, 9250, 9210, 2416, 2261.01, 2240, <coughs> all talk about printer rights, and that's only some of them that I got through. So it is in our policy. We are doing it today, even when you look at a lot of this, but I still am concerned about some of the wording. I, I'm very supportive, but I just think that, and I don't know who said it down here, if we would have worked on it, and I understand it's been 60 days, if we would have worked on it, maybe the words would have been a little bit different to reflect all of us so that when somebody goes to the Ohio School Board Association's um, conference, based on our new policy, they can speak on behalf of how the board collectively feels. So now you look at our new policy that's going into place, right? We got to be sure that when we go, whoever represents us there can speak collectively for all of us in our community and in the teachers and everybody else. So that's my concern. I don't, don't, I don't want to be lumped into a person that's not looking for transparency. That's not at all it. So I think we have to be careful about putting that umbrella on so this conversation. So what you're saying is 60 days wasn't sufficient to look into these things? I'm not saying that. I've obviously done a lot of looking in when nobody else would make a phone call. So well, I it, and I sent you an email thanking you for your work. Well, but I'm saying right. I don't. I think we got to be careful. We all have sat up here and said we would have handled this differently. Now that we look back in retrospect, right? And we can make those conversations and set expectations. I'm not saying that. Okay. Well, no. Again, the we all. Okay. You're right. I should put a big word like and, that on it. And and so there are there are many policies that we have that are not followed to the letter to every meaning of the words in those policies. Would you agree with that? For the ones I've read through, it's some, I mean, there's a lot of policy out there. Right. I don't know if anyone's look, but right. there's a ton of policy. So what I'm saying is what we know is when, when something is written, is, is someone going to take a magnifying glass and say, here's the word all, and because one homework assignment wasn't sent out and people notified about it, then we are having a problem because we're not doing our job. I don't think that's the meaning of the document. And, and so, again, I just moved to, it's a, it's a simple document that says we should be making the community and the parents aware of what we're doing in the schools. It's their tax dollars that are paying for this operation, and we should be letting them know what's going on. Right now, I think we're falling a little bit short of that, and I just mentioned one of the items. And, and, and so I would, I would move to, to vote on this and pass it, just for transparency and openness for the parents to know. So you're making a suggestion not to make any edits? Well, if you want to make edits, I mean, certainly that's what we're here to do. Um, and I think we discussed that. Um, Mr. Hack, I think, said that he was willing to make changes and edits if it would help other people feel comfortable. For me, I'm comfortable as it is. Even, even if we make changes or edits at this table here, I still don't think we've got enough community input, staff input, you know, administrative input. We haven't done that process. And, you know, Mr. Hack, and, you know, if you, you also had 60 days to, to call for a work session. Um, we didn't call for that until Thursday at our Thursday meeting. Again, we had the opportunity when this was introduced back at the March meeting to call for a meeting, and you could have also done that and reached out to the community. We could have had that, maybe a little bit more time to have that input. So. I would, I, would, I would ask that you not just, you know, lay that on, on the rest of the board members. Um, we all had the opportunity to do that. Right, and we did, and, and certainly, um, you know, had the suggestion been made. I, obviously, I didn't think of it that in that way because it wasn't, we weren't looking to change Riverside policy per se. This is, this is going to always be a, so my bad, and we, we, we could have, we could have, that could have been done differently. But, but it wasn't, and I would have pursued that, absolutely would have pursued that. But I, I think that we have enough time. We're sitting here on, on May 4th. Our, our meeting, I don't know exactly when it is, but you've got probably <coughs> two and a half, three, at least three, three and a half weeks in which we could put this into the, the policy committee, of which I'm a member and, and uh, Mrs. Harden is, and we could, and, and obviously there are some reservations on, on Mrs. Harden's part, so I think that, that the board would be represented in that interaction, that, that we could we could analyze what's going on and edit it and and still be able to, to have something that that is closer to where we are. Um, you know, 
closer to what the consensus of the, of the board is. Now, the, the other thing, because this is not, we're not driving towards making changes in, in our policy, there are a lot of hoops and a lot of, lot of uh, other things this would have to go through, right? So this, this potentially, hypothetically, it gets per, uh, passed by the board, it goes to uh, an OSBA committee in August, and they determine what, what the slate is going to be for the November meeting. And then, and then the the members of the uh, who are in at the um, conference. thank you at the conference would then vote on it, right? And then, and then it's only a plank if it passes. Seventy-five percent passes, and then it becomes a plank and an advocacy point for the OSBA lobbyists in in the cabinet. So it's not there are three, four different, at least three or four different. Things that this has to go through, and, and it, it becomes not not a Riverside thing per se. Then it becomes a consensus building thing, and if it doesn't get consensus, it doesn't move forward. But but we, I, I don't know why we wouldn't want to put that at least initiate this this concept of transparency. And if it goes somewhere, great. Then it's not just us saying it; it would be the whole seventy five percent of the of the of the attendees at the conference. So it's not just us saying it; it's it's something that would have been evaluated. Mr. So I, Hack, I'd like to add one thing. Uh, I know that it sounds like other people may not have done this, but in the community members and parents that I've spoken with about this document, every single one of them has supported it. So I have spoken with people, and the, and the support from the people is 100%. It's not 99%. It's 100%. The people want this. That's, that's, at, least, that's at least the people I have spoken with. Well, now I'm going to go back to something you said about not being transparent. I, I know it's been a while since you've had a, a child here, probably since we started using things like Infinite Campus. My phone blows up all day with notifications about things that are going on in my kids' classroom. When I say all day, it is all day long. I get notifications. There is no lack of transparency on what is going on in our kids' classrooms. The, the entire idea of this that is uncomfortable, it, it's just the absolute vague open-endedness to it. There is no lack of transparency at Riverside. I mean, my notifications, when I say they're going off all day, they're going off all day. Oh, excuse me. I just think it's kind of an unfair thing to say, that we're not transparent. <clears throat> when you're not experiencing it, it is trans it, it is all day. There is so much information we get. I, and and I, I have no doubt, and in my, my kids, you know, my, my daughter graduated in 2018, so, so it's been obviously a few years since I have been on the receiving end. But I, I would say there's different levels of transparency, right? So there's, I, I don't know exactly what's, what is in there, but, but what we're talking about here is specifically the other, other aspects of what's going on at Riverside that's, that's probably at a, at a deeper depth than here's, here's what's going on. Here's no, I understand that. I was just saying to yeah. Scott's point with going on, on we're not transparent, that, that is just not, I mean, I, so I, not accurate. Well, I, I would say that the, there are certain aspects where we are, you know, quite transparent and, and and that that's great. So let's 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 push the transparency to a different level. The the things that we're talking about here would not necessarily be daily events, but it would be it would be inviting people to the table and parents to the table to find out what's what's going on, um, and to, to 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 take the the thoughtful time to evaluate more deeply what's going on with curriculum and other things, so, and then provide feedback. Let me ask you a quick question. I don't know how anybody else would, I'm just curious about everybody else's interpretation of this one statement on here. Now therefore be it further resolved, it's the last one before the signatures, the last it's statement, shot. yeah. It says now therefore be it further resolved that this resolution shall be in full force and effect from the, from and immediately upon its adoption by the board. So when I read that, and I guess that's why also when I read that, it, to me it's saying as of today, if we prove this, we're living by what's in this document. Yeah, I don't think that's this our board. I think that's the Ohio School Board. I, I don't, and to me, in my interpretation, it's in question. So I, I guess think, that's what I'm just, well, I kind of want to get your interpretation. Yeah, I mean, Gary would have to sign that as well. Yeah. No, no, no individual school board has the rights over this platform. It's only the Ohio School Boards Association. But when right, I read it, it says. I understand. So, but it refers, so, so, so it doesn't refer sense. to us. Riverside Board, because you look at the first page. When we fill in Riverside School District, the station, and the quotes that says the word. So anytime the first board is referring to the five. So that's like one of my concerns, like statements like that. Yeah. I just want to make sure. We've got three and a half weeks to, to, to iron iron issues out and, and, and strike language that, that 
you know, it does not have consensus. So I guess the question is, is and if, I don't know if we'll get through all the, <coughs> you're saying just take it to the policy committee. Take it to the policy committee and let's see, let's see what we can we can do to, to change the language that's a question. What is everybody? And then, and then let me ask you a question. Once it comes out of the policy committee, how are we going to get the input from the other interested parties? Like, how are we going to do that? What's the timeline for that going to look like before we would actually then have to so, re-vote so, on it at a meeting? So here, here's, here's my answer to that, is that we, we potentially had 60 days, and for a variety of reasons, we've not utilized the 60 days as, as, um, uh, as, as well as might have been done, and I'm partially to blame for that. Uh, but the, the, the point I would make is this, is that, that we are kicking something off. There are, there are three different, so there's the, the hoop of, of the August OSBA committee that reviews this. There's getting it through the, the, the conference in, in November. There's then getting it incorporated, and then there's the, what, I guess what I'm saying is that if there is consensus, that that is, it's beyond the consensus of, of just Riverside, and that there's plenty of opportunity for people to, in other districts, to come in and and chime in on this. So I, I hear you, but because we, we we haven't used the time efficiently, and and I think it is, I think this is a pertinent issue for this year, that that it's it is worth moving forward, and if it if it doesn't. If it doesn't get garner support, then it isn't going to happen, and we, there's then then it's a dead it's a dead item. So so I think that there are there's enough buffering here. This is not this is not Riverside saying this is what's going to happen. This is this is let's kick this idea off, and 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 if there's consensus, if there's if, if it passes by seventy five percent, I would say that's consensus, and and. And in an imperfect way, we still understand whether or not this this is something that is worthwhile to move forward on from a from a school board a greater school board perspective. I will. I do. I talk to the OSBA just to kind of see what's been turned in if they could share. They did elaborate. Nothing at this point has been even turned in as far as claims, which or um, you know in response to the call to action. Uh, but I guess <clears throat> many people are probably working towards that final date that, you know what I mean, it's kind of like turning your homework assignment just on time. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, that, that, that may be, but, but, but certainly, but, so, so is, is the, the policy that, that we passed earlier this year about getting, you know, whatever is, is proposed at the at a conference that, that we get consensus among the board and then the representative. So, so if, if I, I think we need to kick this off because of the time constraints. And in the end, if, if when it comes to, to that, that, that meeting prior to the the conference, if the consensus of the board is that, that they vote no, then that's how we will vote. But but I, it's, I think it's important to to take advantage of the time frame that we have left. I'm sorry. Certainly, Mr. Hack, I didn't want to interrupt interrupt you, but you know at the beginning you said we hadn't taken the time to to do some of that homework. Uh, I just want to state again, I have done that. I have spoken with people in the community. So when I received this document. 60 days ago or however long it was ago, I started talking with people. So I, I just want to state that some of that work has been done at least by one board member. If no one else decided we, we, to do but that, But we haven't had a work session option. to share that information or discuss that as a board. Well, certainly I didn't go document people's quotes. I did a general uh, discussion with people. And, and I don't think it would be normal to write down the people's names and their quotes and bring that to the table. It would be a general informational item. So again, back on so. back on this topic, please, just to make sure uh, the, the question at hand is, are we willing to let this go to the policy committee? And let the policy committee to take a look at all the wording and see if they can make some adjustments to it and bring it back to the board. The policy committee is made up of two board members. I mean, am I, are we supposed to bring back some information from some of the other stakeholders? Maybe some changes, some of their own bullet points, or, or what, what? What is the yeah, what think, is the expectation? I guess is what I'm asking. I, I, in my personal opinion, I think it'd be fair to bring back some other feedback. Um, Mr. Official got feedback from the people he know he knows in the district. I think it's fair for. I'm asking. I, I guess what I'm asking is sharing this document. Obviously, it's public record. Um, do we give it to the stakeholders to? Edit? Is that is that what the expectation is? So, 
And we'll, no, we'll I, turn I, around we, time we, beyond that. So, so we have about three and a half weeks, give or take. Um, and I think that, that we can we can do a a solid job of 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 modifying this and get some input, but but I don't we, we don't necessarily pass out the stakeholders to, to edit, but feedback that we can certainly get feedback on, on different things and we can be accommodating. But we I but here here again, here's here's the fail safe, right? The fail safe is it needs to get through a committee meeting for the OSBA in August. It needs to then pass the the uh, Legislative the legislative platform at the at the November conference, right? Seventy five percent, right? If if it gets seventy five percent, then then I think that's that, that that is demonstrative of consensus, at least in the greater school board community, that that's a positive thing. The board can 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 even though it, even if it initiated this and it ended up in November on the on the on the agenda, we have the ability as a board to say vote against it, whoever our delegate is going to be. I think there are a lot of fail, fail safes. This is not a perfect process. I agree, but but I think that we have enough time to to make it work, and that that we also have the ability to to uh, if, if the consensus of the board is we have the ability to to kick it off because this is an important issue, and if it, and if in the end people don't want to support it when we go to the November because of other feedback, then then that's how we proceed. But this this is not Riverside saying, "Gosh, this is what I want to do," and and making it happen. This is kicking off a process that, <clears throat> frankly, I don't want to lose the opportunity to have the discussion. So, in essence, what we're saying is this document is going to be born out of the minds of our board, right? I mean, you're you're going to be voting on it, accepting it, not accepting it. It's not going to be. Uh, Discussed at a PTO meeting or teachers meeting or anything like that. It's just coming from the board. Well, I, I think that, that we can we can get some input and we can get more input between now and when we would vote on our stance, the board's stance going into November, and and, and if, if <clears throat> then we can take that feedback into account and, and help that drive our decision making process. At that the, point. the only reason why I'm asking is because there's some discussion about other groups, other stakeholders, and everything else, and having us our discussion with five board members and now just taking it to only two board members in committee. I, I'm not sure what the difference is going to be. I guess no, is what it, I'm asking. The, the difference would be that we would be other than time. We would have the ability to modify the language to make it. Uh, to address some of the concerns that have been raised at the table, but still keep the, the core potentially of what's here, and 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 come to consensus in passing. That's and, fair enough. I, I, I that's, okay. So, so, so that's, make sure that I we really have the expectation that now we're going to be going to different groups and trying to get some of their feedback and to have it. I mean, could ultimately really change what this document says as well. No, I, in my opinion, I, I, I agree. I think it's just taking some of those, like that last statement that I read. I, again, I want to make sure I understand what that means, like all of the everything. It's like really making, uh, it's, taking it's a look at those. It's my point in the last board meeting. Like I said, I read through this. There are some good points in it. Yeah. I agree, but there's some that are impractical. When you're talking about every single piece of instructional material we have to send out to the parents, it doesn't bode well with a, a, maybe a teachable moment where you find something that you didn't share with parents that you know would resonate with the kids in a lesson, and I can't use it because it was, wasn't shared with the community or wasn't shared with the parents. <clears throat> it really ties the hands. I mean, if you think about this sort of thing, we could easily just have uh, a canned curriculum and video and that's it with the, the type of information and instructional material. If we have to share every single, I don't know how you would do that, especially when you, when you uh, like, I, I'm just saying like for a, for a student that's academically disengaged, but you know they have an interest in cars, you know, you don't have that book on the shelf, but you have one at home, you're thinking to yourself, maybe that kid might want to read this book. It's again, it's a piece of instructional material that wasn't shared with the parents. And in this day and age, with the attacks on public education and everything else, teachers feel uncomfortable. They don't want to get themselves in a jam either, providing any type of thing that goes against with what policy is or what we adopt and that's something that we need to but, but there's uh, there's but i'm sorry so uh, i don't think this document uh, states that something has to be known before it's taught i think it's saying that what is being taught needs to be shared with the 
parents. So you're taking that saying, if something's not known, that it can't be taught. I don't think that's what this document says. Right. And, and it's not to make teachers automatons in, in their classroom. Absolutely in their not. It right? just says whatever's being taught should be right. shared but, with but the parents. But we, we, I'm, which, I'm so sorry. Which emails? Today we have emails, and it's not difficult to send emails. And, and I know that someone at the table said that they get phone calls. Well, an individual phone call would be rather inefficient when we're talking a whole email system. So I, I just want to say that I'm not so sure that this is cumbersome, and it sh certainly does not preclude something being taught. Thank you. As, as far as when we talk about the policy committee, I think sometimes we have to be cognizant of what the legal and risk ramifications are of putting you know, all-encompassing information or all-encompassing words into policies. We talked about that a lot when I was on policy committee, you know, like, what does that mean? What does that, what does that do if we have one instance where one parent, I mean, that stuff, that kind of stuff is the things that, that go all the way to the Supreme Court. There, and, and I know I'm, that might sound, um, you know, over the top, but, but that's what happens and that's how it works. And, you know, they find that one word, they, they hone in on one word. I'm, um, I'm just not sure that that's appropriate. I, I don't know that we have the, again, I'm just going to go back and say I don't know that we have the time to do that. And also, I just want to speak to the fact that if we passed something and didn't like the language and then we would be the ones to introduce it to OSBA and then we would go to OSBA conference and vote against it, that just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, this, this is, I'm going back to the, the, the bullet point that I just referenced. And this is what it says ensures that all parents shall be notified of all instructional materials, such as textbooks, okay, reading material, does that mean every book, right? Reading material, videos, digital materials, websites, apps used in their children's curriculum. So if you find something online, a video, something on YouTube that might like, resonate again, or you, it, it, can they use it? I guess is what my question is, because the way I read it, it means that all material, all reading material, Anything you pull offline, anything you use in the classroom, it says will be, okay. shall be notified. The parents shall be notified of that information. That, and, and that's the that's the bullet point that I don't like. To be honest with you, the other stuff I'm, I'm looks all right, but that one is impractical. Not for any reason, not not for the lack of transparency. It's just impractical. So again, I think that's why we need to work on the words. So we already have just different interpretations of things sitting here at the board table of what these bullet points mean. I think that's the whole point of that. I, I don't know that we would have wordsmith it the same way. So, and I, I didn't get a chance. I wanted to last night, but I ran out of time to go back and look at the policy that Mr. Markman gave me that he said he pulled those bullet points from, because he said most of those bullet points are pulled from Neola, and their policy, which is where we get our policy from. So I haven't had a chance to do that comparison. I don't, which would be interesting to do. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me when I read that in, in your email. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If NEOLA is already providing it to our board, mm -hmm. then Ohio School Boards Association is already supporting it, and it's already law. Like, that that kind of was redundant to me, I think. That didn't make sense. Right. So but then what is the purpose of having this if it's already in policy? Because this is a plank going in and advocating for OSBA into the general assembly. But those the things, that are, the things that are in our board policy are already passed as, that there's, most of them are already coming from law. The, the, the point is, what, what what we're trying to make the case for, what this is <coughs> for, is that the the policy that affects parents is, is not well represented within the OSBA platform. Right, and this this would be an opportunity to strengthen that, and and the I had another point. Um, well, I wish I could remember. But but going going back to Dr. Case, what you were saying. That's we we have the opportunity to 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 address the the major concerns. There there's there's time to do that. We can we can make this happen, and 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 move forward. And again. This is not, there, there are, are many hurdles that this needs to get over. At any point, it could be, it could stumble and fall and get, uh, go over the hurdle and get sinners in its knees, right? And, and not, not finish the race. May I make a suggestion then? I, I think the, for the sake of efficiency and the lack of some time that we have, is that every board member has a copy of this and they go through it, edit it, at least in an understandable way with what they would like to see out of a document like this and give it to the committee members 
so that when they come to the committee meeting, we at least have an idea of where everyone is, is on this document. Um, that way it might save some time and you might be able to get something together where the board can agree to support uh, and send it to the OSBA. Well, I think that Mr. McIntyre needs to be at that as well, at least writing any kind of legal document without him. Okay. And, and I, I hear you, it's, and agree, our, this, this, there was attorney input in this, right? So I, but I agree that, that having uh, Mr. McIntyre take a look at it is... I well, just we're going to make changes. I have, I have no McIntyre. issues with, with bringing him to the conversation. Um, but um, I think in terms of the, the actual premise of what this is saying is developed by the board, and, that, and once you think you have maybe in a document where the, you know, at least the majority of the board is willing to support, then send it to Dan to... Right. Look at it. Maybe call another buildings and or not buildings grounds policy uh, committee meeting together prior to the, the submitting it to OSBA. But I, I I think if we go to if we go to the policy committee without having it, you know maybe from each of the board members at least something uh, revised or edited or what you'd like to see in it, what you'd like to see out of it. I, I don't think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have a hard time getting something together. So I, I would I would suggest that that's what we ought to do. Is there a policy committee meeting on the calendar already? No. 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 Gentlemen, I just spoke <clears throat> to Tom right before you got here, gentlemen. I'll have those policies probably by the end of the week to you. They're very small tweaks this time. This is a real small language updates mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it's not a real big pack at all. Um, long story short, what we normally do is put it on for a first reading and then we would meet prior to the adoption. So, but we can always have a policy. See, I don't look at this as really policy, but I would say that the policy committee could review this for the board simply because it has potential to affect the policy in the years to come. Because if I understand this correctly, what's going to happen is this is going to go through all its legal and legislative development. If it becomes law anywhere down the line, any of this language, NEOLA will eventually update one of our policies to reflect it. So that's how this will get into our policies eventually. It'll probably, if I have done this long enough, will probably be a year to a year and a half away and in I, one of their policy updates. I just want to make a note too. I don't think that this is about necessarily going to create policy. Oh no, it, it doesn't. But I would say that the, the committee could review it because it could affect the committee eventually. closest yeah. related yeah, to right. what we're doing. I don't disagree. I just want to make sure everybody's aware though that really the purpose of it is so the OSBA knows where this public school districts in the state of Ohio are saying, we we want this, right? So it's not saying, hey, we're going to put policy in place. Right. It's also to protect the policy that exists, right? So that legislators don't pull rights away or something like that. So I, I guess I just want to make sure, I know it's being taped, that everybody understands that it's not necessarily just about making policy. It's no. just saying the school districts think this is important. Now, honestly, I would say it would be probably a year to a year and a half yeah. before. And that's if it where it goes, like you mentioned. It, <laughs> so seventy five percent is a pretty big hurdle. Yeah, so. I don't know what passed last year. I mean, that's the meeting itself was kind of interesting. Um, Mrs. Grassi shared, but um, yeah, I have I have concerns about their entire process and how that works. You know, um, it's not recorded. Votes aren't recorded. You know, it's just it's very but silly. All right. So if I'm hearing correctly, we are okay with providing suggestions to the policy committee. The policy committee can meet, see if they can make tweaks to the document, um, and get that back to us to take a look at after review with Mr. McIntyre. Do you want to set a, a deadline for everyone to have completed that task uh, prior to the Probably scheduling of a policy? As far as reviewing and sending the feedback? Yeah, I would say so. I have a lot of, I mean, I myself already have a lot of notes on it, so I, uh, Anybody have a deadline date? So, so um, would would a deadline of, of next Tuesday make sense? It's, it's almost a week, or even a week from today, the eleventh, which is uh, which would be Wednesday. Is it, is it's about getting the feedback to you, right? Getting the feedback, and then, then we can pursue. When the eleventh, Tuesday, the time. Yes. So Mrs. Harkins, because she's the chair. Right. And, it's no, and I don't think there'd be any reason why I, I couldn't be CC'd as well as being the. Oh, no. I, yeah, I would assume the board would, would be. Yeah.
Do you guys want to talk about the date or policy or anything? I think we need to probably get with Dan on that too, so we can get him there. I don't want to pay okay. a date and then not have Dan available, so we can. Okay. When's the board meeting? The 26th. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So the question is. <laughs> What do we do with the um, motion to, um, with the OSBA call to action that's on the agenda? We postpone it. We might postpone it. Make motion to postpone it to a future meeting, like the last meeting. Any uh, <coughs> other discussion before we make that motion to postpone it? I, I'm just gonna. I won't be at the May 26th board meeting. If you're all aware of that, but um, like this process seems to be fine. You know, as long as I get the opportunity to go in, it'll be an email, and everybody has their thoughts on that. That's fine. I'm fine with that process. Any other discussion? Right. So I'll make a motion to move the OSBA call to action legislative platform to a. I guess I'll just say our May. What is it, May 26th? May 26th, 2022 meeting. Can I get a second? A second. Any further discussion? Mr. Placco, can you call the roll? Are we Prisky? Aye. Tom Heck? Aye. Scott Fischel? Aye. Linda Grassi? Aye. Jennifer Hart? Aye. Motion carried. All right. Our Next meeting is um, a curriculum and programming committee meeting May 9th, buildings and grounds committee meeting May 10th, finance and audit and personnel committee May 11th, business meeting May 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. Um, and make a motion to adjourn. Check that.